So I've mentioned this before, how much I really love working with old tools. And um, yeah, this guy here, it, it had some uh, stampings on the back and I was able to research it. So it's, uh, it was made sort of mid 1800s. And uh, yeah, I just like the feel of these old tools. And the other thing is the craftsmanship. They, they were made to last. So obviously the creator, the craftsman who made this tool is no longer alive, but if he were, he'd still be expecting it uh, to be in use. So yeah. Fascinating, old tools. Um, so garlic's done. Um, conservative estimate I would say is 400, and probably closer to five. Um, so now what I'm gonna do is separate it into um, one quarter of it's gonna go back in the ground, and three quarters of it's gonna go uh, in a dry, cool place in, in the house um, for winter use. And obviously we're gonna have to gift a bit of this away because there's a lot of garlic there. Um, yeah, so uh, as far as growing garlic, anybody that's interested, probably the easiest crop you can grow. So we're gonna plant this um, first week in November, uh, about the time deer hunting starts. Uh, once we get back from our moose hunt, it'll go in the ground. We mulch it, and that's the last thing we do. We don't do anything until we harvest it the following year. And it's one of the first green things to come up through the ground. So good, good food, good for you. So today I'm going to talk a wee bit about corn. Um, yeah, at, at one time was considered the number one food that uh, feeds the people on this planet, billions. Um, I think it's been replaced by rice um, due to the fact that corn is used for other applications now. Um, but it certainly was the number one and perhaps still could be. Uh, it was first developed, they believe, around 10,000 years ago in southern parts of Mexico by indigenous peoples. Uh, they called it maize, we call it corn. Um, and it fed, it feeds the world then, and it's still feeding the world now. Uh, it was developed from a grass, um, hard to imagine. And the little seed pods were tiny little things that over thousands of years of cultivation turned into the corn that we know today. But this was an essential food crop for the natives in the 16, 17, 1800s. But in order to preserve it, they had to dehydrate it. And obviously didn't have modern techniques, they couldn't freeze it. So they used a method called parching. So the first step in the process is to dry the, the cobs out. So I'm hanging these guys up. We'll let them dry for a couple of weeks. And then we're going to parch them. The parching has a couple of things. Number one, it will help in the preservation, but it also cracks the hardened kernel so that it's easier to mulch, um, to grind up in, and uh, use it for other applications. Anyway, we're going to talk a little bit about that later when I actually get to the parching part. But for today, I'm going to get this corn um, hung up here and get it started to dry. So to elaborate um, a little bit more on the value of this corn to the indigenous peoples. Uh, I'm going to take you back to November 11th, 1778, and we're in the middle of the uh, American Revolution. And Joseph Brandt and his Haudenosaunee's allied with the British, uh, with a group of um, uh, British loyalists under the command of uh, Walter Butler, were raiding up and down the New York frontier, uh, burning cabins and villages. But it culminated in the in the what they became known as the massacre of, of Cherry Valley. Um, there was a fortification there. Um, they were unable to take that. It was manned by a couple hundred men. Um, but they literally burnt the the town of Cherry Valley on the outskirts of the fort to the ground. Um, dozens of people were killed. They took over seventy captives, um, mostly women and children. Um, Mr. Butler was able to get 40 of them released roughly, but the rest were taken to the Haudenosaunee camps. Um, and at that point, calls for, per, uh, calls for reprisals went out. So following um, Cherry Valley, battle, massacre, whatever you want to call it, um, 
George Washington um, in June of the next year, so 1779, he orders a, a Major General John Sullivan to head north and, and uh, quote, I think it's, if I can get it verbatim, was, uh, we'll take the uh, battle to the enemy and thus break their morale. And Sullivan was good at what he did. He heads north with a few thousand men, meets up with a um, Brigadier General Clinton, and over the course of their campaign, they destroy uh, 40 entire villages, all the longhouses, the palisades. At that time, the natives uh, were putting down their corn uh, for the winter, their food supplies. Um, literally burnt uh, hundreds of thousands of bushels of corn. They destroyed and burnt uh, hundreds of acres of cultivated orchards. Uh, and thereafter, from that point on, the, the strength of the Haudenosaunee nation uh, was broken. Um, what warriors were left faded off to fight again, and, and the remnants made their way north to British-owned British soil. Uh, and to add insult to injury, the winter of 1779, if one looks at the records, was one of the worst in, in decades in terms of snow and temperatures. So now they're in the Canadas, but uh, the British have meager supplies to feed them because they're at war with the American colonists. Um, a lot of them starved, a lot of them died. Um, uh, a very cold, frozen death in the north. Anyway, sad bit of history, and uh, yeah, a lot of it is based around that simple food product right there. We kind of take for granted today. So I've got uh, all my material out now for building our next project, which is going to be a food cache, a raised food cache like they did. Um, essentially, it's a four to a five month freezer, depending on the harshness of a winter. And so these guys here, they'll be my um, they'll be my four uprights. I got a couple of pieces over there for cross members. And uh, the next thing I got to do is uh, build a ladder because. Uh, Ladder I used to build my cabins a tad short. So I got my uh, four holes for my new food cache. I got uh, got them dug. Uh, the posts are going to go in there that I I drug out of the bush there. Uh, and I got to get back to peeling. <laughs> Seems like I spend half my life uh, peeling logs. Anyway, they're my uprights. And I want, when I'm finished, I want the platform, the bottom of my food cache to be up a good 12 feet. Keep the bears out and such. Um, I'll be wrapping it with tin, just like they did. That keeps them from climbing the post. So they say waste not, want not. And uh, what I have here is all the remnants left over from the log cabin build. Uh, took them over to my good friend, Russell Tyner, a neighbor there. He's got a sawmill and he did a great job sawing that out. So I've got enough material here to build the box on my food cache. Um, building an outhouse, uh, I'm gonna be a two hauler, so it's rather large. And uh, yeah, that food case will keep my food frozen and cold in the winter. I'm going to build a little spring house to keep my milk and uh, butter from curdling in the summer. Anyway, lots of material to do it with. So before I get at building that there food case, I've got to build myself a ladder. Um, it's interesting. I get a lot of feedback from people uh, commenting on, on our channel. And... Uh, a number of them in the winter said you should build yourself a taller ladder because I built this little thing and I struggled the whole build of the cabin with it. Should have built this one back then. 
Anyway, uh, yeah, I've got to get these uh, hue notes and flat spots both on the, on the uprights and on each of the rungs. And I'm just eyeballing it and I want them about a foot. And that old saying, no measurement supersedes a fair line, comes into play once again. All right, back to peeling logs. If there's one thing that absolutely fascinates me about our ancestors that were the first on the frontier is their resourcefulness. There were no stores. So if one needed something, they built it. And uh, yeah, I've got the ladder built. I've got a couple more logs to peel. I've got all my material now to start the food cache. The rock gods shone upon me today. Got four holes dug without too much difficulty. <laughs> Big old honking blisters of rocks. Wait, ready to set the poles. Thank you. 